tried to do my hair today, but I don't know if I like it, but I'm just gonna go with it. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jill, and today I'm gonna be doing the mid-year book freakout tag. So let's just get into it. I thought that this would be the perfect tag because I have not been making videos, so unless you guys follow me on Goodreads, a lot of my answers are going to be total surprises. Also, I feel like every single day when I'm scrolling through my subscription box, someone is doing this tag, so I felt like I needed to do it too. Just a quick note, I will be including Black Lives Matter petition links and other resources in the description box, so please check those out if you haven't. I've also linked both of the creators down in the description box. I know one of the creators' video is now on private, so I'll just link her channel, um, but the other video I will also link. Also, I did not make Make any goals at the beginning of 2020 because I wasn't reading and I only started reading around March when I had my spring break um, and when like the coronavirus really like hit and then I had to be in quarantine and everything then I started reading so so far this year I've read a total of about I think 35 books which is pretty awesome compared to the fact that I really haven't been reading for two years so I'm really proud of that. So now let's just hop right on into the questions. The first one is the best book that you have read so far in 2020. This is going to be a very basic bitch answer but I really cannot give this title to any other books and yes I had to pick two because I am still on the fence about which one is actually my favorite because they were both that good. The first one is a book that was hugely popular when I was away like I feel like everyone has read this book but I ha I wasn't reading so let me have my time and that book is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Oh my god the people did not lie when they said that this book was fantastic. If you somehow missed the hype surrounding this book when it came out in like 2018-2019 it basically follows a woman named Evelyn Hugo as she tells her life story for the first time as a 1960s uh, starlet in Hollywood and everything that she has to do to become famous. Also The Seven Husbands that she has along the way and what will happen with that. And she tells her story to a reporter named Monique. The book starts out from Monique's perspective and we get her input kind of throughout the story. Most of the book focuses on Evelyn's story and oh wow. When I read the synopsis of this book, I'm not going to lie, it did not sound like it was going to appeal to me, but it really captured my heart from the very first page and like kept my heart like in its grip until the very last page. It was such a remarkable story and it truly made me re-realize how absolutely powerful stories can be. I absolutely loved Evelyn even when she was kind of unlikable. I just loved her as a person. Evelyn also identifies as bisexual and so there's talk about that through the book and I've heard that that rep is also fantastic and I really did love reading about it. So yeah, it was really great but I'm sure like 50 other people have already told you that this is great so please if you haven't read this this was just oh, it was fantastic the second book i have is again very basic and pretty unsurprising if you know my reading taste and that is crescent city by sarah j mass even though sarah j mass is definitely not a perfect author by any means and people have been coming up with a lot of criticisms of her work lately which are totally fair i just i could not help adoring this book to absolute pieces. <laughs> no summary that I can give for this book will really capture what it is because it's a very complex adult fantasy book and it's just has a lot going on and I could talk for like 10 minutes trying to summarize it and you still would barely get like anything. Um, just know that it deals with a lot of uh, mythical creatures like it has werewolves and vampires and fairies and angels and sprites and necromancers and it, we got we got all kinds of stuff in this book. It's sort of an urban fantasy like they have cell phones and technology but everything else has fantastical elements to it. The first like 200 pages, 300 pages that I was reading this book, I was really unsure whether I was going to end up really liking it. There was a lot of like alpha male, like growling, snarling, like typical Sarah J Mass, like males, females, and it was just like kind of turned me off for a long time. And it's not like it got better throughout the book, like it kind of got better, but I don't know, there was just a certain point like around like 300 400 pages where I just something clicked and I just jumped on the train and was just totally ready to write it until the end of the book and oh my god was it an intense 
amazing ride. Also, most of the reviews that I saw focus a lot about how there is a lot of world building within those first like 300 pages and it's really complex and I will admit like especially like the first little bit of this book I was like oh my god this is a lot to take in because Sergei Mez really like condenses the world building to like the first little bit so that you don't really have to focus on it for the last bit. So it is very complicated and I do admit that I was like constantly trying to look things up because I got confused but there comes a point to where it all starts to make sense and I was thankful for all that world building early on in the book so that later on we could really start going and everything like really really comes together and it's just oh, it was so so good. Once this book starts going it like does not stop and I like physically could not stop reading it and I was like I was so flushed I was sweating I was like what is going to happen especially like the last 200 pages was if you've read it you know like it was it was so much to take in I've been spending like way too much time on this first question so we're just going to put put her down um but yeah I really did enjoy this despite people having their own critiques of it which again I totally understand but I just am Sarah J Maas trash and I'm not sure if that's ever going to change next question is the best sequel that you read in 2020 and this is I guess a default answer because I have only read one sequel the entire <laughs> year and that is The Winner's Crime by Marie Rutkowski so I guess this one wins. I probably would not pick this one if there were other options. This is the second book in the Winner's Trilogy by Marie Rutkowski and I really did enjoy the first book like I thought it was pretty good um and so this is a second book and I just really felt like it was more of a filler book. I, I don't know if that's an unpopular opinion but I don't know I just feel like it was really leading up to the third book and I think I'm going to appreciate this book more when I read the third book but having not read it yet I just kind of like felt too fillery for me. Um, so I ended up giving it a 3.5. It was still really enjoyable. This series follows a girl named Kestrel who is a general's daughter and it follows a guy named Aaron and he is a slave of Kestrel's people. And then one day Kestrel ends up buying Aaron to be her slave um, and stuff happens, rebellion happens, love happens and like I don't know I really did like the first book and like I said this book wasn't bad it was just like I wish there was more out of it but yeah so this is the answer for that just by default. Number three is a new release that you have not read yet but want to. There are so so many new releases that I still need to get to, old books that I still need to get to, but if you laid out all of like the 2020 releases that I really want to read in front of me, the first one I would probably pick is Take a Hint Danny Brown by Talia Hibbert. This is the second book in an adult romance companion series, the first one being Get a Life Chloe Brown. I read Chloe about a month ago and I think Talia Hibbert's writing is very hilarious and witty and it can also be very very steamy at times and so I just really love her writing and I really appreciated the first book Get a Life Chloe Brown um, in this series. Um, I will admit I ended up getting Chloe three stars because the first half was gold. It was amazing, it was hilarious, but the second half like stuff happens and I don't know it just didn't really connect with me and I didn't really agree with some of the stuff that was happening and so I don't know, I ended up giving it like a three stars because like I said, the second half just wasn't the best for me. But I've heard people say that Take a Hint Danny Brown is actually better than Chloe Brown. And so you know, I'm very excited to see if I believe that as well. I try not to know much about the specific plots of romance books before I go into them. So I don't actually have a summary for Danny Brown except knowing that it follows the sister of Chloe Brown from get a life Chloe Brown. Number four is most anticipated release for the second half of the year and guys I gotta be honest I took time off I feel like I'm already drowning in books that are already out and so I feel like I don't have enough headspace to actually look that far in the future so I don't really know a lot of books that are coming out so the only one that I am like really definitely going to get like as soon as it comes out hopefully is The Invisible Life of Adi LaRue by V.E. Schwab. I've heard amazing things about this book from people who have arcs of it and I just know that V.E. Schwab, who's one of my favorite authors, she has been working on this book for a very long time and I get the sense that it is very close to her heart. Um, so anyway, I just love her writing, love her work. Not sure really what it's about, but I kind of want to keep it that way. But yeah, so very excited to read this. Number five is The Biggest Disappointment. When I look at the word disappointment, like a book that I really thought was going to be great and it just was not it. The book that comes to mind is The Last Magician by Lisa 
Lisa Maxwell. This is the first YA fantasy book that I read when I started reading again and it was just very underwhelming and I was very unimpressed by this book despite seeing lots of people that I'm subscribed to rave about it and say that it's great. I just personally felt so disconnected from this story and this world like I did not care. I literally like can't even remember what it's about. Like there's time travel and in, it's in New York uh, where this girl from like modern times goes back in time to try to prevent this magician from stealing this book that the magicians can end up being like freed in the future. I, I don't know. Like I am not bothering myself to remember exactly what this is about because it was not good in my opinion or it just wasn't for me is more like it. Maybe I was just not in the mood for it but it really just felt like a worse version of Six of Crows and I love Six of Crows and this just felt way too similar and it just did a lot of the same things like worse in my in my opinion and again I, I could have just not been connected to this book when I read it but yeah pretty underwhelmed and disappointed. Number six is Biggest Surprise. This one was also very difficult to narrow down because I've been discovering new genres that I really like so I actually have a lot of books that I wasn't expecting to like but I gave them a try anyway and they ended up being fabulous but the one that I decided for this question was Slay by Brittany Morris. This book is the coolest. And I'm not even a big video game fan except for like Animal Crossing, but I thought this book was so fabulous. This is about a black girl named Kira who is an epic game coder and she teams up with her friend um, and they create a VR fighting style game um, that is focused totally on a black culture. And black people from all around the world and all different countries of all ages uh, come together to play this game. I highly recommend the audiobook of this book which is how I read it because it is a full cast um, and we get perspectives from like various people around the world as they play the game. Game, and I just thought that the audiobook just enhanced it like so much more than reading the physical copy. But wow did I want to punch some people in this book, especially the white people. They got on my nerves so much and that's I know that that's the whole point of the book. So Kira really wants to remain anonymous when she creates this game and also the game is called Slay, hence the title of the book. Anyway, um, but a tragedy happens where in real life a boy ends up being shot and killed um, because of the game and so the game starts getting like national, international, attention and mostly the white people start calling this book racist because it's supposed to be a safe place for black video gamers to sort of go and congregate and not have to worry about being persecuted and so they are saying that that is discriminatory towards white players but like I said I'm not a gamer so I don't have first-hand experience from for this but the book definitely talks about how difficult it is to be a black gamer most of the video games nowadays are based on white culture and you are black and a gamer it can be really hard to find a safe space and so that's all that Kira wanted to do but people start getting mad at her and wanting to sue her and I just I wanted to punch some people anyway I really thought that the story was brilliant and so much fun I was on the edge of my seat the entire time I was listening I actually listened to an audiobook for like an hour or so before I go to bed and I ended up staying up until like six o'clock in the morning because I physically could not stop listening to this book because I wanted to see what happened. But it's definitely one of my favorite books that I've read so far this year and that is just a huge surprise to me. Number seven is your favorite new author, whether that's debut or new to you. We're gonna have to go with Leah Johnson, who is the author of You Should See Me in a Crown. I talk about this book for a later question. It's about a black queer girl uh, named Liz Lighty who runs for prom queen at their like mostly whitewashed high school. Like there's never been a black prom queen like ever in the high school's history and she's doing it to win a scholarship um to go to her dream college and there's also a female female romance in this book and it was it was so precious. Before I stopped reading why contemporary was already not really my style and I thought that I wasn't going to like it that much because I've really started getting into adult romance so I just I just wasn't sure if I was going to like it but it blew me away. Leah Johnson's writing was just so cute and fresh and hilarious and I'm confident that I will read definitely the next book that she puts out. Number eight is your fictional crush. Now I don't really get fictional crushes anymore um, when I'm reading books. Like, it's just not really something that I do. I can, like, really love a certain character, but as far as, like, crushing on them, I sort of... 
I don't do that anymore. Number nine is your favorite new character. This is kind of a cheat answer, but I for sure am a character-driven reader. And the characters in the story will make or break that book for me. Gotta go with Bryce from Crescent City and Evelyn from Evelyn Hugo because without those wonderful ladies leading the book, they wouldn't be my favorite books that I've read so far this year. Bryce is very scary but also really badass and I really loved um watching her go through her grief and I just I just wanted to give her like the biggest hug because my poor Bryce she really goes through the shit in this book and Evelyn really felt like a character I could reach out and touch that's how real she felt to me and I loved her to pieces even like her ugly parts I just love reading about someone that felt just so real and like she literally feels like a real person loved her as well number 10 is a book that made you cry. Definitely the book that made me cry the hardest was The Simple Wild by K.A. Tucker. I thought that this was probably going to make me cry when I started just from like the synopsis but this is an adult romance book that takes place in rural Alaska. I don't know, I don't know what that was but I'm definitely a city girl through and through so I did not know if I was going to like this book set in rural Alaska. I just didn't think that it would appeal to me. Um, but it follows a girl named Kala and her parents are divorced because her father is an Alaskan bush pilot and her mom like just could not take living in the small rural city. And so she ends up taking Kala as a baby and they move to a big city in Canada. Um, but Kala ends up getting a call um, from her father's like secretary person um, who tells her that um, his health has sort of started to decline and so Kala decides to go on a trip to Alaska to, to try to get to know her father a little better. Wow did I actually end up falling in love with this cute little town like that was unexpected. The romance was cute um, it's not like my absolute favorite but it was pretty cute um, but I really did love the moments with Kala and her father. So many tears both happy and sad like all kinds of tears did I have while reading this book. Number 11 is a book that made you happy and I will once again call up You Should See Me in a Crown by Leah Johnson. Like I mentioned when I talked about it before, this book is the cutest and it made me so so happy and it just made me want to stand up and cheer for Liz Lighty because she is just... I loved her to pieces. Number 12 is the most beautiful book that you've gotten or received. I'm not really in a position to buy like a ton of books like I used to be able to so I've mostly been listening to audiobooks and also checking out ebooks for my library and such um so I don't I didn't like buy a ton of books this year so I guess Crescent City by Sarah G Mass. This is I've seen like prettier editions of this book. This is just like the typical US edition but you know it's just She's just really pretty. Like, like, this book is a brick. It's almost like 800 pages, but wow. Is she a gorgeous brick? I don't know what I'm saying. And finally, number 13 is books that you need to read by the end of the year. There are a plethora of books. I'm just going to very, like, rapid fire some books that I really want to get to. First one is The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin. I've heard so many people talking about this forever, and it is an adult fantasy book that features, um, predominantly black characters. Either all the characters are black or most of the characters are black, so I am really looking forward to this. I also have Queen of the Tailing, which is another adult fantasy. I've just had this book on my shelves for years, and so I feel like I really need to read it. I really want to get to Clap When You Land by Elizabeth Acevedo. I will probably be getting to that very soon. I've read her previous two books, The Poet X and With the Fire on High. I've adored both of those books. And finally, I want to say The Poppy War by R.F. Kuang. I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce the name, just to be clear. Because I've just heard unending adoration for this book, and I just feel like I need it in my life. So yeah, most of those are really intense fantasy books, so I'm not sure when I'm going to read it because I normally like to break up my like intense fantasy like I normally try to read like a romance or something in between just so that I don't get burnt out on the genre because it can be like a lot to take for me. But yeah hopefully by the end of the year. Wow I feel like I've been talking for like three hours I swear. Thank you so much for watching if you made it to the end of the video. Let me know in the comments what your favorite and least favorite book of the year has been. I would love to know. Also I'm always open to some video suggestions since I'm just getting back into it. So yeah thanks again so much for watching and I will see you later in my next video. Bye!